Hi, it's Sister Manic from Live to You TV, and we're with Tung. Now, I'm really interested. First up, I have to know where that name came from. Uh, the name came from the um, the Netherworld. Really, I had to go into a battle, and they asked me what name, and it was just the first thing that came to my head. And it just stuck so well and worked so well that it just seemed so natural that I just went with it. But it's a good name because everyone interprets it differently. If you're sleazy, you'll think it means something sleazy. If you're like philosophical, you think it might mean something philosophical, you know? So who inspires you? We were talking a couple of seconds ago, you mentioned names like Snoop Dogg. So who, who inspires you? Uh, Snoop's great, but he's probably, not, he's probably not quite my biggest inspiration. I would say more... Um, any real soulful performer, you know, because performers go through different stages of being very sincere and what they're doing is very natural and then often as they go along later in their career they become a sort of parody of themselves. I think in Australia, you know, like the Temper Trapper are bands who have, who have come into their own lately really well. I saw Sherlock's Daughter the other night. I think when you get a band or a musician at their, their early stage it's when their reasons for doing it are very pure. You know, I think as time goes on a lot of them lose that purity. So. Anyone who's really keeping it real, I guess, you know? Yeah. So for me growing up, I always imagined my hip-hop artists to be from the wrong side of the tracks. You know, they've seen a gunshot victims up close and personal, that sort of thing. So have you had, you know, the wrong side of the track upbringing or what's your background? No, not at all. Not at all. I went to a private all-boys school and um, I'm from eastern Sydney, which is probably the nicest place you could get. But I mean, to me, hip-hop has never been about, you know, you don't have to have had a shit life to be a good hip-hop artist. It just so happens that because it grew out of, you know, Brooklyn and, and, and New York and the ghetto that a lot of people associate it with that. But I mean, you know, the Beastie Boys weren't, weren't, weren't you know, on the poverty line and, you know, even Tupac, it wasn't as poor as he would leave a lot of people to believe. And, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. There is, there's, it's generally a bit of a misconception, I feel, that you need to have had a really hard life to be making hip-hop. It's music. Either you make good music or you don't. Just because you're from somewhere poor doesn't mean you can make better music. But I do think when you look at someone like Jay-Z, you have to look at the equivalent in Australia. That would be like, Jay-Z came from Marcy Projects, which was as tough as it gets, really. So I'm led to believe. I haven't been there. But that would be like someone from, say, Redfern, going on to have 10 number one albums, 11 number one albums. He's married, Jay-Z's married to Beyonce, so married to Kylie Minogue, <laughs> having, a, being worth a couple of billion dollars in, in retail and perfumes and all the kind of stuff, vodka, he's got bars, he's got everything like that. So I think you have to admire that from someone who comes from nothing to get to that level using hip hop as a launch pad. I definitely admire that. Absolutely. But um, music comes from the heart, you know, that you got the, you're feeling it and it's real to you or it's not, you know? I don't think whether you're rich or poor shouldn't really make that much difference, you know? So are you single? Are you on the market? What's the go there? Yeah, I'm single and on the market. Okay, <laughs> girl, single, on the market. Check out a MySpace page, I guess. Yeah? Ah, oh, you just come up and talk to me if you're, if you're looking for fun. But yeah, there's a MySpace page for sure. The tongue. Oh, six. If I could wave a magic wand and I'm going to make you, say, um, Minister of Arts for a day and you can do whatever you want in that day that will stick, yeah. what would you change in the music industry or what would you change in anything to do with the, the, the arts industry? Well, there should be, well, first things first is that every place I've played, the rider has always just been alcohol. Some of us don't like alcohol. Some of us like other substances. So I think rider should include things like hash and marijuana <laughs> and, and acid and shrooms, because they're hard to get. I think the venue should supply the shrooms. I think, um, I would really like to see a lot more festivals like Peachridge, to be honest with you. I'd like to see, I don't know, more, more different kinds of festivals. I'd like promoters to pay the day after you play. I'm sick of waiting for money from promoters. Is that an issue? That should, we we an don't issue. know a lot about that sort of stuff. We don't know about the background. So do tell us Tell us what happens. I'm sure Peachridge are very good. I, I haven't, we haven't reached that point yet. But with other promoters, you know, I just look at it this way. We make a deal. I'm going to come play and you're going to pay me a certain amount. We agree on it. Once I've played, give me the money. If you have to, like, I mean, there's no reason an artist should wait a month to get their money. Like sometimes, month. sometimes it is, and I mean, it's like if you, if, if the money's going to come, then lend me your fifteen hundred and you wait on the money mm. because I got to pay bills and I don't have a lot of money and I got to pay rent and I got to buy food. So, you know, it's hard for a lot of independent musos to make ends meet and like. I would make that a law if I could, if I was the Minister of Arts. So you're going to give us a demo of some hip-hop? Can you do me some sort of little I can do intro? You, I can do you a freestyle or something. Oh, I can if you a freestyle. Like.
This is a microphone that I'm rhyming through. Tongue kicker free star for life for you. They do this shit for a fashion. I mean, out of passion. I'll be on the lyre bird at 8 p.m. smashing the set. You know how it'll be when I come and step. Tongue light up the scene like he lit up a cigarette. I got people watching as they stroll by the tent. What am I supposed to do other than rap and represent? I'm rolling with my peeps, we just improvise the interview. That is some shit that I can just get in a dude. They go my boys the paper scissors. They true and living. They know when they get on stage how to really give it. I give it up for my peeps who are independent. That's how we represent this. I hope you like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. This is The Tongue and um, I've been grateful for this interview. It's been great. Thank you. Have a good night. Cheers. See ya. Live to you TV.